This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. The Drivers' Championships in both Formula 1 and Formula 2 are nearly decided. Extraordinary circumstances will be needed for the top spot of either fight to change hands. For the uninitiated viewer, it would seem the final round might lack drama. But if you've never seen the Lotus 49 race at Monza's combined oval circuit, get ready for a treat. Often considered the don't miss event whenever it shows up on the schedule, its white knuckle speeds and pack racing provide some of the most unpredictable and hair raising rides you've ever witnessed in sim racing. We'll see if things close out with a bang as we get ready to watch the final round of the Lotus 49 Grand Prix Legend Series. And you'll see it all live here on the Global Sim Racing Channel and the iRacing Esports Network. Hi, I'm Joe Peek and with me in the booth is Johan Vandenbelt. Behind the scenes is our director, the Dr. Amjad Jaman, and he's using cameras provided by Dougie Beard. Johan, F1 fans know Monza, but do they know this layout? I don't know, Joe, but if they don't, they will very soon, because today we visit the Italian Temple of Speed, Autodromo Nazionale Monza. And this track was constructed all the way back in 1922 and was after Brooklands in Indianapolis, the third purpose-built racetrack in the world. Now, a keen viewer has already seen there are a lot of trees around the track. And there's a good reason for that, as Monza is located in one of the biggest enclosed parks in the world. And a little bit of trivia, Monza Park was actually constructed for the stepstone of Napoleon, who owned the nearby Royal Villa of Monza around 200 years ago. Today, however, we will ignore the European political history of Monza and focus on this motorsport history. Because we will not only use the current Grand Prix layout without those pesky little chicanes, but also the old oval. Now, this combination of tracks create a circuit that is just shy of 10 kilometers, where, surprise, surprise, speed is essential for a quick lap time. But you also need other things. You need a huge amount of courage and a double dose of luck to keep it out of the wall. I cannot wait for this race to start, Joe, so before we see how things stand in quali, let's take a look first how Monza combined without chicanes looks like in the Lotus 49. Alright, we're in the GSRC Lotus 49, so let's do a lap around Monza. Coming up to the first half of the oval, aim for the high side because the banking is actually so steep that it will start to steer the car in for you. In fact, you have to counter steer slightly to keep it from sending you to the apron and getting the car all kinds of wonky. On exit, you'll need a little more steering input since your momentum starts to pull the car towards the outside fence. If you've timed your run right, you can slingshot past the car in front of you down the back stretch. But unless it's a last lap situation, I wouldn't advise trying to go too wide into the second half of the oval. Just like before, you've got to hold wide and counter steer. This and the narrow track make it very treacherous to do anything but single file around the oval. Hope you've got a big pair though, because now comes the jump. Let the car drift a little high, then swing it back low and try your best to keep the car straight over the crest. You can see I wasn't quite perfect, and even that tiny bit of sideways momentum makes for a scary landing. If you're in a pack, sideways landings almost always lead to the big one. Once more, the drafting game is going to be played down the traditional front stretch. Here, it's a lot more viable to go too wide into Curva Greta. You can even attempt to outbreak your opponent. Try to get the power down early, and if you've lined it upright, you can counter steer your way out of the corner with your foot down the whole way out. You can hear I had to lift slightly to keep it together. After that, switch sides and brake hard for Della Rosia. You can take quite a bit of curb on the left and get away with it. Then straighten her out and throw out the anchors for the first Lesmo. A late apex is better than what I've got going on here, though if you compromise your exit a little bit, it's okay because it's not often passes are attempted into the second Lesmo. 
Don't be afraid to be aggressive on the inside curb here and really focus on getting to the gas as soon as you can. This is a pretty long straight we'll be flying down. With the braking into Ascari coming up, it's a very popular passing spot. Expect a lot of aggressive defending into here. Under the bridge, spot your brake marker, then ideally you want to get the rear rotated on entry. Hug tight to the right through the second apex, and then be careful not to clobber the sausage curb on the third one so that you have an easier time applying the power. Use up all the pavement to your right, and then get on the loud pedal again. Parabolica can offer a chance to pass on the last lap, but you'd be foolish to do it any other time because of the draft on the oval. Just like Ascari, try to get the rear of the car to rotate on entry, and then ease onto the throttle on exit. I tend to try and short shift to help me find traction. Getting the launch out of here is incredibly critical to lap times, so avoid hesitation. Hopefully, you've kept it all together and have now finished the lap around Monza. There you see the somewhat lengthy lap around Monza's combined oval circuit and it's been, uh, well, not a lengthy season. It's been in the normal amount, 12 rounds because we're in the final one, but that gives us uh, a solid idea of where we sit in the points. And unfortunately, because of the number of drivers that showed up today, Michel Dudignon has now won the championship. Uh, mathematically, he cannot lose to Mick Claridge uh, due to his drop points, even though player just 23 points behind uh billy bob wright has jumped up to third and he's in a close fight with ove train grade who also disposes of dave price drops down to down to fifth we'll go over those points later on how those could wind up swap uh swapping places let's go over to the f2 championship uh which has also sadly been decided yeah but that was a story coming to be honest in the last few weeks with david Rossi leading Basically the whole season, well, with the amount of drivers today, he has sealed the deal. He has enough points over Hideki Corfisto, who probably has enough points as well to clinch that second place in the Formula 2 Championship. Behind him, Andrew Eng is still sitting in third place, but the battle for P4 is still going on. With Don Good in P4, Francisco Gutierrez behind him, and Robert Reynolds not that far behind in P6. Of course, the Nations Cup uh, can also change hands. It's not too far apart. Uh, UK is actually leading just because uh, by nature of the number of drivers that have been contributing versus France, which has been mainly been Dudignon. Uh, so 14 points between them. You could yet still uh, see that swap around. Uh, the US down there in third is uh, basically stuck there at this point. The same thing with Finland, unless something crazy happens uh, between Finland and Norway. So uh, only the top two, weirdly, could change hands in the Nations Cup. What about today's race details here, Johan? Well, we already mentioned it. This is the final race of our Lotus 49 Championship. Two watermarks behind it means that there's two drop weeks this season. It means that the two worst results get removed. Well, we already established how this stands in the points. The race today at Monza will be 15 laps with open setups. The drivers can tweak it just to their liking. They do not have to make a pit stop in the race, but points they pay out to 25th position. And if you're, you've been watching this season, you've been seeing it all on the iRacing eSports Network. We highly encourage you to subscribe to IESN uh, because you can see all kinds of cool racing such as this. How, how many places can you get to see the Lotus 49 on the Monza Combined Oval? This is, I, I can't stress enough how wild a race this is going to be. All you got to do is hit the big red button that says subscribe and you get all the IESN events in your YouTube feed. Now, here in the virtual world, uh, transporting your car to locales literally all over the globe is as easy as clicking your mouse. But in the real world, it's a lot more involved for those who haul vehicles state to state. The last thing you want to worry about is having to fill out all kinds of messy paperwork for the car inspections and then keep them in order on the road. There's great news if you're looking to do away with those stacks of paper. Inspector Ride is the fastest way to conduct a vehicle inspection and create reports. You can save time, eliminate paper, keep better inspection records, and simplify your life all from your iPhone, iPad, or Android phone or tablet. You can find out more at inspectorride.com slash iRacing, where you can even find a free trial to find out if an Inspector Ride is right for you. So check it out. Once again, that free trial that you can download, it is at inspectorride.com slash iRacing. Taking a look at qualifying right now, McClaridge has found himself some speed, which 
pretty much mirrors what we were seeing in the uh, the practice session, Johan. Uh, Michel de Nignon seemed to struggle a little bit. For sure, but it was Mick Claris just now on screen with an incredible moment through the chicane there. Well, not really chicane, a small twitch it is now in the, in the straight line, almost losing control of his car and immediately going to the pits. But like you say, Michel de Nignon, he seems a little bit off the pace here compared to where we see him. Uh, where we saw him drive uh, in the other races earlier this season. Uh, he's currently sitting at P4 behind Dave Price and Rob Olenek as well, so he's out of podium contention. Dave Price, as you can see, is coming over to start finish line. He needs to win three tenths of a second to beat McLaren for pole. He does not do so. He stays in P2. Indeed, uh, a number of cars finishing the last of their second lap because you've barely got enough time to get it in. Tommy Unhola does not go faster on his. This is Roman Pavlowski uh, coming through the only chicane that they couldn't get rid of here. That is Ascari because, well, there's no paved runoff there. So <laughs> there's no way for them uh, to get rid of that chicane. Pavlowski working his way uh, down towards the Parabolica now. And with seven seconds left, going to be just shy of completing that second lap. That's going to complete our qualifying. So your starting order will be Mick Claridge on the pole with Dave Price outside of him in second. Rob Olenek will be P3 and Michelle Dudigny on fourth. That won't matter too much once the speed gets up. Roman Pavlowski does manage fifth with his lone lap and Billy Bob Wright sixth. Tommy Onhola starts P7 with Marco Kika in eighth. Then it's Philip Urquhart in P9 and the top 10 is rounded out by David Rossi. No six is filled by Gary Thiel and Daniel Cedro, two drivers that were used to Finding a little bit further up the field, having a poor qualifying run out here. Monza, Hideki Corfiso slots in behind him in P13. He's being flanked by Andres Bruno. Paul Vergeres, the penultimate driver with at lap time. He starts in front of Gary Anderson. And then there's four drivers without a qualifying time. P17, Ovid Trangerate. He starts far down the field in his fight for P3. In front of Andrew Eng, Gareth Campbell and Dave Gowen rounding out the grid. This could be comparable to Talladega in terms of how this racing will go. So when I said qualifying won't matter too much, well, uh, you can expect cars to be in big packs throughout the race and they'll dwindle down as one by one they fall off, whether that's by wrecking out or just losing the draft somehow. But you got to fall a long ways back. You will get a good glimpse of that, just how effective the hole in the air these cars punch even though they are cigar tubes they uh, do not have the uh, uh, the streamline at the back that modern cars do with the open engine that you can see right there on Ove Trangrade's purple machine just waiting for the last of the cars to grid up and they have the lights come on for the final round this season Green flag is out off the line it looks like a decent start from Mick Claridge uh, same thing from Dave Price. In fact, most cars are pretty much concerned with getting single file on this oval portion as the speed starts to pick up. The danger already does in this first corner, Johan. Side by side, we see Tommy Miko and Hola and Billy Bob Wright are putting a little shell on. Roma Pavlowski is being catched by both of them. Side by side, they're actually quicker than Pavlowski. Is Billy Bob Wright slotting in behind single file? He needs to get overtaken. But he got, oh, Philip Urquhart! Big crash for him. He immediately is in the wall. He's trying to overtake one of the drivers. And uh, yeah, he thankfully was able to hold it off to the side to keep out of everybody's way. That was good sportsmanship by him to keep from taking out most of the field. Up at the front, Dave Price managed to slingshot uh, past the likes of McLaren. So did Rob Olenek as they come over the jump for the first time. Is everybody going to be safe? It looks like yes, indeed. But now it's that hairy run down to Curva Granda. It's Mick Clarence on the inside of Dave Price through Curva Granda. There are two lines here, but you don't have a chicane following it. So staying on the outside here is not going to benefit you that much in the next corner. Still side by side, Dave Price has a nose length in front of Mick Clarence. The Brit cannot see the deal. He used to slot in behind. It is Tommy Mikon Hola actually behind him as well, to, taking a little look on the inside of Michel de Lyon, but through the chicane, he loses quite a bit of time. Hola, after starting seventh, finds himself up to fifth. They've got themselves on the road course portion of the circuit now, through both of the Lesmos, and just look at this train of cars all still stuck together. We ride on board with fourth place Michel Dudignon 
who is now our champion because of that, but it's a battle for the lead. Once again, Claridge and Price side by side into Ascari, and Claridge had the inside of the first apex, outside of the second one. He comes out ahead, but he does not have the speed. Is it gonna swap again as they come down to the Parabolica? Oh my goodness, it's already erupted on lap one. <laughs> They're fighting like it's the last lap of the race. And this fighting and all the slower chicane, well, slower comparatively to the rest of the track, really bunches up the rest of the field behind him. You can see everyone until Michael Kika is basically a part of this battle now. Now, quick update on Andres Bruno. He got turned around in Curva Grande last time around. He's a second retiree of today. 18 cars still running. 15 of this is what we're going to have to go through before it's all said and done as we got a car down on the apron. I think that was in Hola back there in fourth. He now gets up onto the bank. You can do that for a little bit from what I've seen, but not for very long. As we look back from first place, Dave Price at all the cars trailing behind him. They hit the back stretch once again. This time around is Tommy Miko and Hola from P4 and going to the inside. Also, uh, Dave Price being overtaken by Mick Claris, he slots in back to the lead. Tommy Mikanhola wants to make it a two for one on Dave Price. Side by side as they go towards a very nasty bump. Exiting the oval, still side by side. This is, <laughs> you need a lot of courage to keep it. Oh. Tommy Mikanhola is the one who blinks first, losing a position to Rob Allenek, to Michel de Dion, also to Roman Pavlowski. He will lose a position, I think. Wow, just by not keeping it side by side there, he falls down completely. Dave Price, meanwhile, gets the lead. He gets by Mick Claris. Man, that low side off the jump does not look advantageous. And we've got a wreck. Billy Bob right involved in that. Daniel Sadro. And I think amazingly, they only had two cars actually uh, suffered from that incident. Yeah, David Rossi and Billy Bob right. And that's, of course, huge news for the battle uh, for P3 in the championship with Billy Bob Wright retiring over Trangerate still continuing. Let's watch the replay at the start and see what happened to Philippe uh, down the back stretch here. Did he just get loose coming off the banking here, Johan? Yeah, I think he got a little bit loose. This is, of course, very early in the race what happened with him. He's got in there just... It's a weird place to crash. He tried to save it. It looked like hard in the guardrail there. Yep, that was the end result on his lid, so no saving that. I think it almost looked like just it bobbled off the banking, and then when he clipped the grass to the inside, that's when it was lights out. So in the meantime, as we come back live, up at the front, Dave Price, uh, who is coming back onto the pitch straight, being followed by Mick Claridge. Then in third, it's Rob Olenek, Michelle Dubion back up to fourth. Uh, Tommy Unhola is in fifth with Roman Pavlowski in sixth and Mark Kika, I think, at the tail of the train in seventh. Nope, they've got Gary Teal on the back of there before they got a break. Dave Price now will be a sitting duck for the drivers behind him as they go through the first oval corner. You can see Mick Claris, uh being completely caught up behind him, completely in the draft. But Rob Olenek seems to be the one with the most momentum on the back straight of the oval. He swings by Mick Claris side by side with Dave Price going to the Ooh. second part. Oh, he gets completely cut to the inside. Dave Price there took that corner. He gave him, of course, just enough room, but not enough room to keep it side by side for Rob Olenek as he go over the little bump. It is now McLaren with a lot of momentum. Look at him on the inside. Oh, that is incredible. He's going to be all the way in first, but don't discount Tommy Unhola. He gained some spots on the backstretch, but the track is plugged up as they are too wide in front of him as they hit Kerber Grand up. They all sort each other out through the long sweeping right-hander. I get the sense the way that Unhola is being ultra aggressive today. He's thinking, I got nothing to lose. Final round, I want to win on a broadcast race. <laughs> I wouldn't blame him if that's the way that he's thinking. Now, one of the things that I love seeing though is, is Michel de Dion, who's currently sitting in P5 and he's almost driving like a champion. He has, of course, won already several times this season. And in this race, it's almost like he's just wanting to stay back. He doesn't really want to put himself in the heat of the battle in front of him. Just want to stay behind him for now and just set himself up to make his move, his lunge forward in the final parts of the race. Yeah, Michelle's been here before. He knows the stakes at Monza combined and doesn't need to be up at the front. We're already getting to complete lap three. And as I said, the train of cars up at the top 
currently is eight. Ove Trangrade could get back into this. He's about one and a half seconds behind Gary Teal, so it's not impossible. You see the purple seven car. The interesting thing about Ove is that he's actually catching up to them. Last time around, he was over a second uh, more behind Gary Teal than he's currently. Because of all the fighting happening on the front of the field, with all those first, uh, second, third place drivers, Ove Trangerate is just able to catch up. In this part of the track, he is losing a little bit of time. But once he starts battling towards the corners, he catches up again. They work their way onto the back stretch. Olenek's got a run on Claridge. This time with only one car to pass, might be a little bit easier, but here comes Dave Price down to the inside. Price lifts before they get to the banking, slots in the line. Mujola stays with him back and forth. Oh, but Tomo Mikolai is looking left in the middle of the oval section to try and find a way past Nick Claridge. He cannot find a way past as they come onto the wheel start finish straight well basically the back straight it is here at monza and with it is up front they're gonna go free wide i think joe they're gonna go free wide it's mick claris taking a little look on the inside dave price gets the position to him you can hold out a lot of momentum because of that he slots in behind us to reach kufa grande the trust between these drivers when racing here is incredible and i have to i have to imagine that they're thankful that it is mostly regulars here today in fact i think it is all regulars out here uh, racing right now so they all know what they're doing on this circuit now as they hit the lesmos let's take a look back at the second pack because we haven't touched on them yet uh, that's being led by hideki koifisto which is more of a duo if anything uh, david rossi behind him and then you've got a little bit of a split back to the next cars which is andrew eng and daniel sadra that is 10th 11th 12th and 13th respectively the interesting thing is that Daniel Sandro and Andrew Eng are way quicker than Hideko Corfiso and David Rossi, around two seconds per lap. So if they keep battling and driving as they're currently doing, they will catch up very soon. Now, talking about catching up, let's look at Ovid Strangerate because the gap between him and Gary T was decreasing quicker and quicker. The amount of time between those two drivers is now around one second. So the Norwegian is coming. Last lap around was seven tenths quicker than Gary Thiel. And I think that we can now say that the battle for the lead is a nine car train. Wow, he had a big slide in there. We didn't see it on screen. Ove is trying so hard. He actually, he dropped back to about two seconds back for part of the circuit. I'm not sure uh, why exactly that happened, but he should be enough within the draft that I expect him to catch on to the tail at this point. In fact, there you see fastest lap of the entire race so far. Uh, went to Ove Trangere that time by. It's Price up at the front, followed by Olenek, but that's not going to stay that way because here they go three wide yet again for the lead. Mick Claridge all the way down to the inside. Ove Trangrade, or excuse me, uh, Rob Olenek splitting the middle and down looking for third. That's Tommy Unhola, and they're staying side by side. This is not good news. Are they brave enough to do this over the jump? No, Dave Price knows better than that. He slots back in the fourth. And Dave Price was really moved into the decision there by Tommy Mikonhola. Tommy didn't want to give way, but he immediately gets him back on the back straight. Michel de Lyon also is looking very feisty. Now he tries to find his way past uh, Tommy Mikonhola. Rob Olenek and McLaren, however, side by side, they're blocking the rest behind him, slotting back single foul through Groove again. Oh, they got awful close between Price and Unhola, almost touching. And that actually checked things up to Michel Dudignan behind them. Oof. This is this is very different. I, I almost like that they put that uh, uh, this is the final race when everything's been decided because I I think everybody's just throwing caution out the window. In the past, Johan, we've seen them really almost wait until the last four laps. Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy that they're not doing that. All the drivers... But the thing is, you can also say that it might be to your own benefit to be up front here because once you're the first driver, if... P2 crashes, you're not going to be involved in that. So that actually might be the safest place to drive right now, is to fight your way to the front, the place where Mick Claret currently is sitting. Behind him, it almost seems like Dave Price is losing the draft a little bit, fighting with Michel de Lyon. He was uh, defending quite heavily as he reached Ascari chicane. Over Trangerate is now closing uh, Marco Kika down. That's a battle waiting to happen as well for P8. As Michel de Lyon takes a little look on the inside of the Parabolica chicane, side by side with Dave Price. Staying there side by side, this will not help either of them uh, trying to catch up to Tommy who is currently driving a P3. Dave Price around the outside has more momentum and stays in front of the Frenchman. 
And that position probably won't stay that way now that they're back to the banking. Hats off to Obey Trangrade for all he's done to catch this pack. Although Kika's starting to drop the tail slightly, so he's going to want to try and get around him quickly. Here we ride on board with the purple machine, trying to time it just right off the banking. Maybe gets held up slightly. I don't know if he's going to be able to get by. He immediately starts back in, trying to get another slingshot pass. Marco Kika in front of him. Now these two drivers are losing a little bit of draft to the drivers in front. We're still fighting her hard. Uh, Dave Price and Rob Olenek going side by side through the corners. Oof, things got a little hairy there for a couple drivers, but we need to point out Tommy Unhola is leading this race. How often do we get to say that? Well, we're not going to get to say for long because there goes <laughs> Mick Claridge back to the front. Blink twice and you miss it. It's not the tail of this race with lead changes. Dave Price also wants to fight his way by Tommy Nico and Hola, and it's still Michel Dillian in his P5 position. He really seems comfortable there. Oh no! Ooh, the driver's almost losing control. That was Dave Price, I think. Wow, how did he catch that car? He's losing tons of positions as uh, we're trying to let this settle out before we go to replay. Wow, he got freight trained. <laughs> Really got ran to the side by Roman Pavlowski. Let's look at that once again. The entry, it just snapped. Yeah, look at the right center tires of Dave Price. He was breaking on the grass and what a save, like you say, uh, to not lose his car there. He just cuts the corner slightly. I think that he got a slowdown penalty for that as he let the rest of the drivers by. The incredible save after that small mistake from Dave. It sends him all the way down to seventh. Let's see if he tries to climb back forward or if he's just going to settle down in the back of this train, which looks to be splitting slightly. Roman Pavlowski losing touch to Michel Dudignan up in fourth. That's not a good sign for those in the back. Now, a good thing for those drivers in the back is that Dave Price is there. Dave Price has shown so far in the race that he's very quick, so he might be able to lead that train back to the rear of Michel Dudillon's car. Michel, who's trying to push a little bit past Rob Olenek. Tommy Mikonhola as well as Mick Claridge. He's driving away slightly. It almost seems like the gap between Michel and Tommy Mikonhola is six tenths of a second. That still means that Tommy has the draft. They should lose a little bit more time. Meanwhile, and uh, Roman Pavlowski is under heavy pressure of Gary Thiel behind him for P5. And does Gary Thiel decide to go around? He's thinking about it. He's going to try it too wide. Oh, and I think they actually banged wheels there on their way into the banking. Gary now moves back behind Pavlowski into six. Oh, there's only so many times you can get away with that around here. Absolutely. Meanwhile, Tommy Mikonhola setting himself up for a beautiful move back to P1. They're free wide once again over the back straight. Rob Olenek is on his outside. Michel Dudio tries to split the middle, he has more momentum, he gives up a little bit earlier. Tommy and Rob are still side by side, but it's Rob breaking later. Michel Dudio almost profiting from that. Still free wide almost, going through the Grande, Kufa Grande there. Tommy Mikonhola, he has more momentum coming out of the corner in front of Rob Alenek. He's back into the lead of the race. This Finn is flying high and I have to imagine he is grinning from ear to ear. Behind him still a battle for second as Dudignan gets past Rob Olenek finally. Don't forget Mick Claridge back there in fourth. I think any one of these top nine has a chance to win this race. This is incredible stuff. Like we saw Michel de Leon, he was calm the whole race until this point. He's now trying to make moves on the outside of this car. He can rub on the neck, breaking extremely late there. Just narrowly missing the cars in front of him. Michel Dudio is still side by side with Ooh. Tommy Mikonola, who has a bad exit and it gives Rob Olenek an opportunity. He squeezed his car in there. Rob Olenek knew just how much width he needed. Behind them, McClarich has to lift because of them being split too wide through the Parabolica. And Olenek on the outside cannot find the grip, so it's going to go back to Unhola for second. And all of this is still with about two thirds of this race to go. Exactly. I mentioned it before, these drivers are driving like it's the final lap of the race. And there's still eight laps to go here at Monza. You can see that it's still a nine car battle as well. Marco Kika is uh, holding the Red Lantern in this group, so to speak. But he's still there, less than two seconds of the leader. He still has a shot in this battle as well for the victory. Rob Olenek trying to look 
make a free wide there with Tommy Miko and Hola, who's back in the lead, getting by Michel Dudillon. Michel Dudillon will lose one position, not two positions. He slots back into P2. It's, it's interesting seeing the give and take in these drivers, uh, especially when you consider it, it is effectively oval racing, just with a road course thrown in the middle as Dudignan goes back to the front. And Olenek's going to see if he can dispose of him. Now as they reach the curve of Granda, Olenek's got the inside and he is clear. So your order is Olenek, Dudignan, Unhola and Claridge. And Mick Claridge, he had a lot of momentum coming out of the oval section. He would have had more than enough momentum to elevate himself to P1. He just didn't have the track position to actually pass the drivers in front. He has to stay P4, battle for the lead. Still, Michel Dunignon on it. He passes Rob Allenek through the first Lesmo corner. Oh, Rob Allenek trying to brake with a few wheels on the grass, giving his car a little twitch. He saved that as well. Loses one or two car lengths to the Frenchman in front. And just to give you an idea, the top nine are currently separated by two and a half seconds all together. Ooh, uh, Olenek. Oh, Olenek out breaking himself, having to cut the course through Ascari. That is not only going to send him to the back, but possibly losing the draft as everybody tries to avoid him coming out of that chicane. He did that to avoid Michel Dudillon in front of him. He got a horrible twitch breaking for the Ascari chicane. He just ran his car over the grass to avoid the Frenchman in front. Go to a quick replay of that. You can see that he just probably breaks a little bit too late there, Joe. Tries to avoid him. Gets a little bit of uh, twitchy as he puts more brake pressure on his car. Avoids the Frenchman. Loses a few positions. But like you said, he's still on P5. He's still in the middle of this battle. Being challenged by Dave Price now. And one thing that I noticed is over train rate. I would have expected the Norwegian Joe to make his moves... Uh, to the front of this group a little bit earlier. He of course started at the back of the grid, but I would have expected him already to be fighting for podium positions. As it stands, he's currently fighting Roman Pawlowski for P7. Well, so many drivers are being aggressive. I'm guessing maybe he's tried to make his move and just the draft has prevented him. Claridge, now your leader oh, ahead of uh, Dudignan, a little bit of too wide back there between Teal and Olenek. Teal's the one that I've got my eye on right now uh, because Remember, he was towards the back of this pack. Now he's racing in fourth. We got another change of hands for the lead as Dudignan tries to go up front. Dudignan versus McLaren. How many times have we seen that this season? Once again, they're fighting for the lead. It doesn't matter if we're basically on an oval track or on a road course. These two drivers are always fighting tooth to nail with each other. This time around, it's Tommy Mika and Hola challenging them for the P1 and P2 positions. Slotting back in, Gary Thiel has uh, fought his way up this group a little bit as well, Joe. He's now P4. That's the highest I've seen Gary Thiel, I think, the whole race. Certainly is. Claridge gets another run, but backs out of it before the second Lesmo. Just an update, uh, Philip Urquhart has taken the car back out on track and has bumped it back up to 15 cars running. So fans of Philip uh, will be glad to know that he's going to try and see the checkered flag before all is said and done. Now, of course, we know these top nine drivers are fighting very hard, but let's focus a little bit on the battle for P10 because that's also happening. That's David Rossi currently driving around. He's being challenged by two other drivers, Hideki Corfisto and Daniel Sadro. Daniel Sadro, of course, uh, probably one of the quickest drivers of the bunch. He is trying to find his way forward. He had a poor qualifying run, couldn't stay with the drivers in front of him once the race got going. He is now trying to find his way past Corvisto, trying to bring himself to a top 10 position. Yeah, a bit sad that Sadro uh, dropped the draft a little bit. Used to seeing him ride a little bit higher, but uh, that's the way the cookie crumbles here at Monza. We're back up with the lead pack. Uh, who is this swapping positions back there? Oh, excuse me. No, I guess we are uh, back still with the drivers in the back. Oh, this is, this is up front. Excuse me. Yeah, they're, they're is... splitting up a little bit. Michel Dunion and McLaren are driving away from Tommy Mikon Hola. They're side by side on the back straight of the oval. Tommy is being challenged by Gary Thiel and Rob Olenek, almost making it free wide for P3. It is Gary Thiel now on the inside of the oval, but it's Mikon Hola who on the outside just has so much momentum. Oh, so close to the wall. There's less than a 
entire width between himself and the barrier. On the outside, he has to scrub up a lot of speed to avoid the ball. And you can see immediately Gary Thiel finding his way by. Rob Olenek as well. He's losing a few positions back to P5. If anything, it's almost amazing that we haven't had more wrecks today, considering how much side-by-side -side racing we've seen on the banking. That is usually a death wish. They come through Curva Granda, and Unhola is still pushing the limits of this car, going the long way around to regain those spots up into Della Rosa. This is also pretty dangerous as Gary Teal finds out and has to lose out, almost runs into the likes of Rob Olenek with that. Up front, that's oh, a going sideways. Student Yawn losing out, trying to keep it out of the barrier. Did he touch the arm core or did he keep it safe? I don't know, but there was almost contact between him and McLaren. He keeps it going. I think he avoided contact with the barrier, but he did not avoid contact with McLaren there. Flash on board. Each driver getting awful close, outbreaking himself. Wow. Yeah, Rob, Rob, as we go back live, Rob Olenek just lost control of his car in the Ascari chicane. He is now, he kept it out of the walls, you can see, he can still go on, but he has completely lost connection with the rest of the cars in front. We go to replay of that incident, he was in P3, but he just took too much speed there in the Ascari chicane, tried to save it, narrowly avoiding there Michel de Dion. Great reflexes from the Frenchman. Well, and, and unfortunately, Michel de Dion also had contact in, in all that, uh, yeah, hard that contact mess. with Sika. This is Teal's perspective. <laughs> and here from Du De Jong, he just avoids him. Then the next chicane, he has to hit the apex hard. Just bobbles over the track into the line of Marco Kika. Now, I think that both of those drivers might have a little bit of suspension damage. They're both still continuing, however. Michel Du De Jong is currently driving P8, Kika P7, Roman Pavlowski P6. The rest of the field, they have basically break, broken away a bit from the lead pack. It's Gary Thiel and Dave Price fighting for P3. Tommy Bicon Hola is leading the race and he's leading it in front of Nick Larich. Are they going to go over the jump too wide? Oh my goodness, this... Uh, oh, oh, they come yeah. together! And it is a spectacular wreck as one would expect. Dave Price and the likes of Gary Teal find themselves out of this race. That is one of the biggest crashes I've ever seen in the Lotus 49. I did not think this was going to work out between these two. Well, it certainly didn't. You can see on the inside there, Dave Price is getting a little wobble, steering his way slightly into Gary Teal's path. Not a lot either of the cars could have done there. No one wanted to give in. This is the result. Michael Kika there just barely affording Barry too, I think. Bubbled up and it bubbled up and it boiled over. First we lost Olenek and Dudignan. Now Teal and Price. Now Dudignan may still be able to keep up with the group and re-catch them. He's uh, working with Marco Kika. That they are about three and a half seconds behind Roman Pavlowski, who makes up the tail of the train of the top group, which is spreading out. Yeah, Roman Pavlowski just had a horrible run through the Ascari chicane, lost a few seconds, uh, well, one second because of that. But that second gonna hurt him because over Trangerate is very quick. He is one of the drivers that basically, after everything that happened at Lipec, he stayed out of trouble. He elevated himself from, I think, P8 to P3 now. Nick Claridge is leading the race. Tommy Mikon Hola is trying to follow him, but the gap between P1 and P2 has also increased to six tenths of a second. The Finn has to step on it a little bit to make sure that Mick doesn't drive away. And I think we need to face the prospect that it is looking more and more likely that Tommy Unhola could actually win this race today. He's still hanging with Mick Claridge, and Ove Trangrade could yet still get to it, and... Uh, decreases chances just by sheer randomness. But he moves back to the front. The number eight car is now your leader yet again. Well, one thing about Overtrend Rate, I remember that uh, at one of the Talladega races, I think it was last season, Overtrend Rate was actually one, the winner of that race, where he started the last lap in which position? P8, P9? He got com completely through all the chaos and brought himself to victory lane there in the end. So that's really a dark horse to keep an eye on. But like you said, Tommy Nikonhola, he has 
Well, we mentioned it in the lab guide earlier in the broadcast. He has the courage, at least, that you need in a track like this. He really is not afraid to put his car side by side, to brake late, to keep it side by side for the difficult corners. That's really paying benefit for the Finn with, uh, in the battle with McLaren. So now that things have thinned out, let's give a little love to some of the battles at the back. Remember Sadro and Coivisto, those two still very close together. And the fight becomes the fight for eighth because of the cars that have fallen out ahead of them. Sadro currently leading the pair in the number five machine. They are working towards the Della Rosa sort of chicane up towards the Lesmos. And a bit of a bad run by Hideki Coivisto. Finds himself losing a little bit of ground. He's going to have to hustle to get back into the draft of Sadro. Bad run as well, front of the uh, field, Tommy Miko and Hola. Through the infield section, through the Lesmos, through the well, kind of Della Rocha chicane. He's losing a few car lengths, a little bit of speed on McLaren. And you can see it on track, the gap has increased between the two drivers and also allowed Ovi Trangere to catch up slightly. Roman Pavlowski behind him is seemingly falling down the wayside and Michel Dudillon doesn't have the speed to close down with three laps to go. I think that Michel Dudillon is probably staying in P5 unless something happens with the drivers in front. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised that Dudillon isn't able to close in on them. It looks like he was trying to slingshot with Kika, uh, but at this point he's abandoned that and Kika is dropping back. We see the Frenchman and current champion not uh, looking likely he's going to be able to finish with a win. Up at the front, changing hands yet again. It's Unhola ahead of Claridge. So this presents a tricky proposition for the Finn. Johan, if he's faster on the oval, well, that's the first half of the course. He wants to be ahead on the second half. Yeah, but I think that for Tommy it's imperative to, to overtake Nick Claridge whenever he has the chance because he knows that Nick Claridge is quicker in that infield section. You at least have to close down the track position as much as possible and preferably be in front of Nick Claridge once he reaches the perfect round. He didn't manage to show this time around because if you're in front of Nick Claridge here, it would be very difficult for Claridge to actually make that overtaking maneuver stick. And, uh, and just stay in front of him once you reach the oval again. Look at here, once you reach uh, the Della Rocha chicane, you can see McLaren's immediately gaining a few car lengths through the Lesmos as well. Tommy Nikonhola cannot reach the, ape uh, reach the apex, and his car also seems a little bit more twisty uh, than McLaren's. McLaren's is really profiting from that driving away. Over train rate is following uh, suit a little bit. Nikonhola, he really has to use that momentum that he has in the oval parts to get by McLaren's every chance that he gets. I really wonder if if Ove's hanging back right now. Oh, uh, no, he's overdriving the car a little bit into the Ascari chicane. So I guess he's not holding back, pushing at least here in the road course portion. We're going to get two to go at the line. Up to the Parabolica, your order for the top five. Claridge leads, Unhola is in second, Trankerade's third, Pavlowski is in fourth, and Michelle Dunion is a distant fifth. Yeah, I'm curious if Roman Pavlowski can catch up to the, the top three of this fight. I don't think he'll be able to. But over Trangerate is closing in. The gap between him and McLaren is 1.6 seconds. Let's see where it stands once they reach the final lap two minutes from now. Tommy Miko and Hola was seven times behind McLaren. Once again, once they reach the oval, he just has more momentum. He takes it around 330 kilometers an hour. McLaren is around 50 kilometers an hour down on the fin. You can see that paying dividends here on the back straight of the oval. It's Tommy setting himself up. Slingshotting by McLaren here. Now, one thing that I might say, it might be uh, successful, it might be a good idea for Tommy to next lap, the final lap of the race, hold back on the back straight, set yourself up for this part of the track, and then make the move once you reach here, the once you reach the normal GP layout again, because then you will be in front once you reach Curve Grande, then you might be able to defend and be more difficult corners against McLaren. I agree. I, I was thinking the same thing, that if I was him, I'd start playing a little bit of uh, strategic games. And McLaren uh, is the one playing strategic yep. games, now not overtaking <laughs> him there. And I kind of wondered, because he, he held back quite a bit through the second part of the oval, and I was like, oh, maybe he's... Oh, oh, he's going to try and get to the inside. No, he backs out once again. Yeah, I think Mick Claridge 
It wants to be in second place until they come off that second half of the oval on the white flag lap. And behind them, Pavlowski has now caught up along with Ove Trangrade, so it is not so simple anymore. Yeah, I don't know if this was the best uh, idea of Nick Larich because yes, he sets himself up for a good opportunity, but now also Ove Trangrade and Ro Roman Pavlowski are right behind him. In the two-car battle with Tommy, he could probably win uh, quite easily, but with those two extra wrenches in the mix, I don't know if Nick is going to be the one coming out on top here. Down towards the Parabolica, the white flag is waiting. For our viewers in America and hearing the speeds that Johan was, was listing off. Oh, is that way wide, Tommy Unhola? I, <laughs> this is intentional. I am pretty certain that he's doing this to try and let the others through. Oh my, look at this. It's almost farcical. <laughs> no one wants to lead going into the final lap. Well, it's Tommy, unfortunately, being forced to lead the final lap, but he is not giving any draft to uh, McLaren. So driving different racing lines. <laughs> it is over Trangerate. He's the first one bouncing on the throttle pedal. He's now putting it side by side with McLaren. McLaren on the inside. He has a little bit more momentum. Tommy Mikonhola is being reeled in there by the both of them. Somebody's got to go, and 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 all of this, they're actually allowing Duty Yon to catch them. He is going to be in the mismix. Look at that. You can see him, the fifth car in line look now. Look at Kika. Look at Kika on the inside. He slingshots himself to P5. He is now a part of this battle as well because he will have a great run out of the oval. He is right up the rear of Roman Pavlowski as he reaches the end of it. Tommy Nikonhola is leading, but he is going to be wheeled in very quickly by Trangor and Claridge. He is trying to take as much speed off the oval as he can. He goes defensive down the front stretch, trying to hold the other drivers off. But Mick Claridge has the speed anyway. He's going to get by. Ove Trangrade as well slots into second, but he's going to have to fight the long way around. Is there enough grip around the outside of Curva Granda? This could be what Mick Claridge needs to try and pull away. Two wheels into the grass for the Scandinavian, and he somehow pulls it back. Your order after the oval is Claridge, Unhola, Trangrade, Pavlowski, and Kika. This is where Claridge wants to be. He has now a little gap to Unhola, who's holding up Trangrade and Pavlowski behind him through the second last mode. He's still in front. He needs a good run out of here to the Ascari. This is a place where all those drivers behind him will have a little bit of draft to be able to close down the gap to the bridge in front. Well, this is a perfect scenario for Mick Claridge. He knows he's faster than Unhola in this portion of the circuit. But with the rest of the drivers plugged up behind Tommy, he has almost free reign to take this one home. Can he do it through this final corner of Parabolica? Unhola a little bit of slow, out, a little slow out of Ascari. Ove Trangrade knows that he goes onto the attack, trying to go around the outside ahead of them. Mick Claridge is well clear by half a second. Ove Trangrate, I'm not sure that he's going to get the win this time on the race. But in fact, he's going to have to settle for third because up ahead of both of them, Mick Claridge is going to take the win here at Monza. Unhola takes second, Trangrate takes third. Behind him, Roman Pavlowski is P4. Michel Dumillon, after everything that happened, he got caught up. He finishes the race in P5. If we drop down a little bit to P8, there's a slight battle still happening. We saw it early in the race. Daniel Cedro and Hideki Corfisto, they're fighting hard. But it is Daniel Cedro finishing the race in P8. Hideki Corfisto has to settle for P9 here. The last driver on the lead lap will be Andrew Eng. It's not a driver that we saw a lot today. But having a good run out there, winning eight positions, staying out of all the mayhem. He's the last driver on the lead lap, finishing here in 10th place. That's going to take us to break here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. That was a fun time uh, out there on the Monza Oval. We're going to come back with the official results as well as driver interviews and stick around because on your screen, you'll see all the upcoming races here on the GSRC.
Welcome back to Monza. We just watched the final round in 2019's first season of the Grand Prix Legends series. And I have to say that was the wildest Monza race we've ever seen in this series. And that's saying something for Monza races in the Lotus 49. Mick Claridge came out on top uh, with a little bit of strategy helping him along the way. Tommy Unhola should not be ashamed of this second place, even if he didn't get the win. That was fantastically played by the Finn. Ove Trangrade climbing up from 17th on the grid because he failed to qualify to third place onto the podium. Roman Pavlowski manages to wind up in fourth, and Michel Dudignon himself even admitted in the chat post-race that he was a little too shy on the final lap. That nets him a top five only. Marco Kika winds up in sixth with Rob Olenek in seventh. Daniel Sadro uh, gets himself in eighth place. Then it's Hideki Koivisto in a ninth. Andrew Eng as well, making a great climb going from 18th to 10th. And the drivers outside the top 10 didn't finish on the lead lap with Gary Anderson, the only driver outside of the top 10 that actually saw the checkered flag. He comes home in P11. David Rossi, our championship victor in the Formula 2 championship, he finishes in P12. Dave Price and Gary Thiel, they had incredible amount of courage to go side by side on the outside, uh, on the exit of the oval. But a bump, unfortunately, ended both their races, P13 and 14 for them, respectively. Philip Urquhart had a great uh, recovery run after his crash early in the race. He comes home P15 in the end. Paul Ferrer was one of the early retirements as well. Billy Bob Wright, we saw him retire early as well. He couldn't defend his P3 position in the championship overall. Because of that, Gareth Campbell, that's one of the crashes that we didn't see retired early as well. Andres Bruno and Dave Cohen didn't see a lot of the race either. They retired early in P19 and P20. We've got our winner ready to talk to us. He may not have won the championship, but he wins the final round in incredible style. Mick, we were saying uh, post-race how that was one of uh, the the wildest races we've seen uh, most aggressive we've seen here at monza but i one word comes to mind for your final two laps and that is cheeky sir <laughs> yeah well you know i was um i was i mean first of all when i saw the grid i saw uber right down at the back you know and i just thought oh well, that's you know unlucky for him but at least that's one of them out of the way you know and um and then when we got to like lap 12 or whatever it was, I saw him behind us. I thought, how the hell did he catch up? <laughs> you know, he must have just got, he must just just got run after run after run, you know, through the whole race. And then, um, yeah. And then um, Michelle was like six and a half seconds back or whatever it was, you know, because when he missed his brake marker, I, man, I had to come off the brake just so he didn't run into me. But that was a hell of a scary corner that was. And then, um, so he was like six and a half seconds back. And then when we got to like the last lap, Tommy starts slowing right down, you know, because he didn't want to lead. That's what I've been saying in the videos, you know, the guys up front know what they're doing on the last lap at Monza. You don't want to be leading, you know. And um, so that was it. I just, no way was I going to go leading into that oval, you know. So, so yes, yeah, so it worked out, you know. It uh, it left us laughing for a bit, uh, watching everybody try to give someone else the lead on the way into the oval. But uh, the rest of the race, though, now... We were shocked because in the past, it's it tends to calm down a, a little bit after the first lap or two, at least with the front pack, because everybody kind of knows how the racing works here. But that wasn't the case in this time. Was there some sort of a gentleman's agreement that the, the championship's pretty much over? Everybody just go have fun today or what happened out there? Well, that wasn't the way I was looking at it when I when I was in practice. You know, I even told a couple of guys that are watching, uh, you know, I'm going to hang I'm going to be hanging back, you know, off the lead group. And, you know, I'll, I'll be there at sort of lap 12, 13, sort of trying to make some moves. But it just, I don't know, it just, it was just a freaky race where everyone just wanted to be in front or, you know, or, or up the front, you know. But no, it, it was, it, yeah, I, I didn't like that, you know. <laughs> it's not nice being, being sort of, um, you know, that aggressive in the middle of the race or at the start, you know. You, you just, you don't need to, but, uh, you know, like if, if that's what's going to happen, that's what's going to happen. You don't want to be too far back in the league group, you know, no matter what point in the race. So I didn't want to be really behind you know i didn't want to be like fifth or sixth in the group because it is quite tough to get up the front but um you know no matter what lap is lap you're on you know it can get a bit dicey so so maybe guys were just thinking exactly the same you know like they just wanted to be in at least in the top three you know just to sort of be safe you know out front well regardless it it uh, we're not complaining up here in the booth because it gave us some incredible entertainment uh congratulations on the win here today and we look forward to next season already yeah, looking forward to next season as well. As well, uh, thanks to you guys and um, well done, Michelle, for the championship. I mean, uh, 
what a drive, you know. I, I, I told you I'd catch him in the middle of the season, didn't I, Joe? I told you, didn't I? <laughs> you proved your yeah, point. No, he, he, got, he, he was too good at the start and at the end. You know, he was just miles miles better than me. So, so yeah, fair play to him. Congratulations to him. Yeah, I, uh, I think we were all amazed that you managed to run him down and make a race out of it. Uh, but a uh, great one today. That was Mick Claridge, uh, our winner here at Monza. We've got second place, Tommy Unhola, ready to talk to Johan, who uh, he's probably going to be pretty happy with that one, I would imagine. I would imagine as well. Tommy, welcome to the booth. Now, before I want to congratulate you with the P2 position, we were just talking with Mick Claridge. That last lap or going into the last lap, it almost looked like a game of hot potato the game that you were playing. Like no one wanted to lead the last lap. <laughs> yeah, yes, it was. Hello. Uh, yeah, I didn't want to lead it. And uh, we were uh, almost alone with Mick for few laps there. So... I passed it him always when I could, and we uh, tried to kind of uh, make teamwork to pull the gap to uh, position three, but it doesn't really work here if he doesn't make mistakes. So then I kind of forgot it. I was uh, just thinking that I don't want to do it in the end. On um, I want to do it on last lap, but not on lap before that. But I was just concentrating on driving and forgot all, all, all about that and uh, that happened then and uh, uh, I tried to uh, drive it slowly uh, that lap then so there was a bit of back behind and uh, then I slowed down in last corner and actually first corner also so waiting to see what happens but nobody made a move so but it was interesting and fun. Absolutely. No one wanted to bite there. Well, one of the things that happened in the race was that you were one of the most exciting drivers out there. You were, it, it looked almost like you were one of the most uh, aggressive in the, in the good sense of the word drivers out there. You were almost willing to put your car side by side with someone else. Um, what was your strategy here today? Were you like, I want to basically lead every lap uh, as possible? Or how did you approach it here today? Well, I got a bit of bad qualifying, so I just wanted to get in the lead back, but uh, it was really fun overtaking few cars and I got it done pretty fast, so I was then thinking on straight that uh, usually, uh, oh, I think this is my third time here, but usually it's kind of boring and everybody just waits for uh, attempts and uh, doesn't really do anything, so... I thought maybe I should uh, try to be, uh, of course, clean, but as aggressive as I can, and try to put my car everywhere. And I think it catched a couple cars uh, also doing the same later, as I don't remember these races usually being like this. And when I got into top three, I was thinking it's uh, really good that uh, I'm there, and uh, it was really fun after that. As I was thinking maybe it's a podium for sure, and it seems like it was. It was an absolute uh, blast to watch you guys battle out there. Now, P2, that's a great way to run out the season. Are we going to see you next season again here in the Lotus 49? Yes, thank you. And hopefully I can make more races. As I think I did only three now and uh, plan to do full season. So it's kind of disappointing, but I had fun here, so that's good. Awesome. Great to hear. Well, we hope to, of course, see you again next season. And congratulations with your P2 and podium position here at Monster. Yes, thank you and see you later. That was Tommy, Miku and Hola, our podium finisher in second place here today in Italy. And that's going to close up our interviews as well. So we want to give a few thank yous before we go. Of course, uh, thank you to uh, the likes of... Uh, uh, Inspector Ride uh, for sponsoring us once again. If you want to check us out, that is inspectorride.com slash iRacing. If you want to uh, get that free download and a thank you once again to, uh, excuse me, I lost my script here. <laughs> thank, uh, thank you to iRacing for putting us on IESN. I need to collect myself. Uh, that big red button that says subscribe is all you need to do to click to make sure that you get all the iRacing uh, races on your YouTube feed. So, 
Thanks to the companies that provide the software and hardware for our broadcast listed here on your screen. And additional thanks go to Eric Eckholm and June Lalonde, who provide our wonderful music. See the screen for, uh, for how to get a hold of more of their great work. Thanks to the team today, Johan, Amjed, and Dougie. If you'd like to find out more about GSRC, including upcoming races, you can find it at globalsimracingchannel.com. Or you could check us out on social media. We're on Twitter at GSR Channel, Facebook at Global Sim Racing Channel, and Instagram at GSRC underscore Graham. Don't forget to head on over to our YouTube page and hit that big red subscribe button as well so that you don't miss a moment here on GSRC. The first race the next season, that's also going to be an entertaining one. They're going to Watkins Glen. That'll be Saturday, March 16th at 8.30 a.m. Eastern here for the Lotus 49, guys. We also have upcoming races for other series listed on the screen, so check those out and mark them down on your calendar. Until next time, race clean, race hard, and we'll see you on the track.